Welcome back, everybody. Appreciate you joining me once again here on the Cabral Concept Controversial Show. Not radically different than yesterday. Yesterday, we talked about where the plastics, the microplastics are coming from, one major area. And again, if you want to check out that show, that was episode 3399. Today will be episode 30. 400. So stephengabral.com slash 3400-3400. And we're going to go over a new study, a new study that's fairly controversial. And it is on plant versus animal. What's best for muscle growth? So I have my opinions on this, no doubt about it. But I also want to share with you good clinical science. This was literally just published not too long ago. It was published in Medicine and Science in Sports and Exercise. I will link it up, of course, for you at episode 3400. The name of the study was actually The Impact of Vegan Diets on Resistance Exercise Mediated Myofibril Protein Synthesis in Healthy Young Males and Females, a Randomized Control Study. It's a mouthful, so it's easier just to say what's better for building muscle plant or animal-based protein. Well, let's actually take a look at this um, summary on the science. And then of course, I'll give you my take as well. Literally, this was just published eight days ago. So done out of the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. I apologize if that's mispronounced. And uh, let's go over it. Here it was. A uh, new study asked three questions about muscle protein synthesis in response to a nine-day diet and weight training regimen. First, does the source of protein matter, plant or animal-based? Does it make any difference for muscle gain? Second, does it matter if total daily protein intake is evenly distributed throughout the day? Or make maybe like 30 grams at breakfast, 30 grams at lunch, 30 grams at dinner, or could you have all 90 grams, and I know that's a smaller amount, only at one meal. And third, does a moderate but sufficient daily protein intake influence any of these variables? The answer to all these three questions is no, the research found. Pretty interesting. So let's go over this just a little bit more in depth because the dogma has always been that spread your protein out during the day. The second dogma is Animal-based proteins are better for building muscle. And the third is what I want to get into a little bit more in depth. All right. So measurements taken after a single meal might not reflect the amounts of consuming a balanced vegan diet over time. Bird said one previous clinical trial had looked at muscle responses in vegans and omnivores who ate a laboratory diet and engaged in weight training for 10 weeks. That study found no significant differences in muscle protein synthesis over time. However, volunteers in that study consumed 1.6 to 1.8 grams of protein per kilogram kilogram of body weight per day, which is much higher than what is needed to maximize muscle protein synthesis and build bigger muscles with weight training. It also gave those on the vegan diet the bulk of their plant protein in supplements, which is not realistic recreation of how vegans normally eat. Bird and his colleagues wanted to know whether the habitual consumption of varied vegan or meat-based diet of whole foods, rather than the ingestion of just a single meal or getting one's proteins from limited sources, would influence the rate of muscle protein synthesis over time. They also wanted to test the hypothesis that a moderate protein intake in the range of 1.1 to 1.2 grams per kilogram of body weight per day should be evenly distributed over the day to create maximum muscle growth. A previous study at his lab found that protein intakes higher than 1.1 grams per kilogram per day makes no difference to the rate of muscle protein synthesis when weight training. This amount of protein also is more in line with a typical American diet and testing what people normally eat is what he found important. All right, almost done with the study. Just want to share with you. They recruited 40 healthy, physical, actively individuals um, from 20 to 40 years old. And they looked at their typical, you know, habituation based diet. They called it on seven days to then what they were going to be doing in this study. Roughly 70% of the protein for the omnivores was obtained from animal sources such as beef, pork, chicken, dairy, and eggs. And the vegan diet balanced the amino acid content of the meals, ensuring the participants consumed complete plant based proteins like beans, etc. The vegans and omnivores were then divided again into those who ate roughly the same amount of protein at each of the three meals and those whose protein varied across five meals throughout the day. So typically three meals, two snacks, uh, with a larger portion of protein consumed towards the end of the day at dinner. The participants engaged in a series of muscle strengthening activities in the lab every three days. They also wore accelerometers to keep track of their activity levels when not in the lab. Each day, participants drank heavy water, which was a which was labeled deuterium to stop uh, a stable isotope of hydrogen. The deuterium atoms. I won't go too deep into this. Finally, Bird was initially surprised to see that there were no differences in rates of muscle protein synthesis between those eating vegan or omnivore-based diets. 
omnivorous diets. He also was surprised to see that protein distribution across the day had no effect on the rate of muscle building given results from past studies of acute responses to dietary interventions and, and weight training. It was thought that it was better to get a steady state delivery of nutrients throughout the day. I also thought if you're getting a lower quality protein in terms of its digestibility and amino acid content, that perhaps the distribution would make a difference. And surprisingly, we showed that it doesn't matter. Finally, he ends with this. When asked about the study, it's the kind you put in your mouth after exercise. As long as you're getting sufficient high quality protein from your food, it really doesn't make a difference on what type of protein you need. Very interesting. Very interesting study. I'll let you check it out yourself. Now, my first you know, look at this would say, it's not very long, right? So it's like, well, the diet and the whole plan wasn't done for a very long period of time. So if it was done longer, would it make a difference? His previous studies showed that it doesn't seem to. So what can we maybe infer from this is that if you're weight training, in this case, two to three times per week, and you're getting sufficient protein, which would be above 1.1 grams per kilogram. Let me give you a little bit more realistically. Uh, if you're if you measure things like and look at it in terms of pounds for our U.S. based listeners, if you are 160 pounds and we divide that by 2.2 right grams per kilogram, you get your you weigh about 72.72 kilograms. So let's just say you weigh 73 kilos. Okay, so if we multiply 73 times the 1.1 you need about 80 grams per day of protein. So here's the thing. I've, I've found over the last 30 years, essentially the same thing in my practice, is that people need to be eating at least one gram per kilogram, essentially. Now, even though the uh, initial science says you need 0.8 grams per kilogram of protein. That's really for like really sedentary people. Most people, they need a little bit more than what they weigh in kilos. So take your weight and divide by 2.2. If you are more than, let's say, 50 pounds over your ideal weight, you can find out body composition and, and you can do it in a little bit different way if you were to get, you know, just within, let's just say, again, I'm going to put this in air quotes, normal BMI, right? Um, so, but that's the lower end. I like that they use the 1.6 to 1.8 range. Let's look at that. 73 times 1.6. You're going to get 116. And that's almost exactly the range that I give for people. Almost exact. I like people if you're around 160 pounds, to be between 80 and 120 grams of protein per day, with most people settling in right around 100. It's not too much where you may have to worry about during the ages of like 30 to 60, of potentially increasing mTOR to greater degrees, and potentially not getting into autophagy and AMPK as much as you'd like to help to kill cancer cells, etc. But it's like that, that balance. Now, are you going to get the body transformation results of someone doing closer than or closer to maybe like 1.8 to maybe an even amount, like one gram per body per pound of body weight. In my my estimation, it, it's actually people do get better results that way. So I just want you to know from a practice standpoint of working with people now literally for 30 years, I have seen people get better results by increasing protein so that there is no deficit really ever. However, is that the best thing for their health? No. And that's why I don't consider them to be inclusive of each other. I think the best body transformation programs are a little bit lower carb and a little bit higher protein and actually more animal protein than plant-based. But if you're talking to me like, what's the best health-based? I think it's actually more plant-based. Doesn't mean you can't eat any animal. And also, it's earning the side of a little bit less protein. And that's backed up by Walter Longo's research and many other people's research, like almost all cancer-based research as well. So I don't want to say like this is just one thing. And also, I'm very unbiased when it comes to this. I honestly mean that. It, for me, it's about getting the best results possible for my clients. And so I like to stay open. So what I would say is even based on this research... I'm going to err on the side of getting my clients the best results they want. If they want body transformation, I still have seen better results with more animal-based proteins and less beans legumes. But if someone's number one goal is not just body transformation, but they also want health and body transformation, I know I can use the 
plant-based protein supplements like protein powders. And I know that I can use more beans, legumes, dal, all of those as well. And maybe, you know, they want to add in some fish. So that's what I wanted to share with you here today. I would love to get your thoughts and your comments, especially if you've been training a while, maybe five plus years, or you're a practitioner. Have you tried both plant based have you tried both plant based diets as well as animal based diets in your clients or for yourself have you gotten better results on one or the other and uh, would love to hear your thoughts one last point is this i actually have seen better recovery and strength on people adding a little bit of animal protein into their diet. I've worked with many people that are vegan and they've been vegan for a while and they'll add in even just some fish or some eggs and their overall energy dopamine levels. Now, we don't want those too too high as well. Uh, and their recovery seems to be better. Now, again, I want to see more rigorous scientific research, but they're far less catabolic. And I know that because they're increasing mTOR and, and they, they, their, their body comes back a little bit more to life. I will share that because I honestly want the best for you. As a practitioner, if you want to be plant-based, I support you on a plant-based diet. If you want to be more animal-based, I support you there. But then I also need to make sure there's a longer intermittent fast and that we're doing things to also increase autophagy and AMPK to balance the more anabolic-based proteins that someone's eating. So hopefully this was helpful. Again, this was just on body transformation. It's not on overall health. I've shared with you what happens when you start to get higher and higher in protein intake and all cause mortality, but I wanted to give you an objective viewpoint on a study that literally just came out about eight, nine days ago. All right. All the details and the study will be linked up at stephencabral.com slash 3400. Uh, have an amazing day, everybody. Let me know what you think in the comments and I'll be back tomorrow with a brand new Cabral concept. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.